Three, two, and one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to, I think, the sixth edition of the Seven Figure Clinic Talk Show. I have a hell of a guest for you uh, here, uh, a gentleman who just had a new baby, uh, a gentleman who has went from about zero to about 20000 bucks per month, strictly telehealth. He ain't stopping there. He's looking at hiring staff, expanding out, adding services to his business based in sunny California, Mr. Sean Kuhn. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks, Colin. Thanks for having me. Well, shit, man. I, I, think, to be here. I think the cat's out the bag when I, I dropped the whole baby line. Uh, for those who don't know, I did make a post in here, but uh, Sean just uh, welcomed his uh, newborn son. Is that correct? Yep, 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 yeah. Uh, Connor William Kuhn is, has entered the building. <laughs> William yeah in the building man. we're excited we're happy he's our he's our third we have two older older girls four and two fiona and heidi so right. yeah but he's our he's our third and final man and and to get right <laughs> to it like, like to cut right to the point for those watching uh when i first came into contact with mr kuhn who i've been calling kuhn for the past you know uh four months it's all right uh, five months whatever the hell it was traditional german it's, it's kuhn but <laughs> i guess it changed when we came to america at some point oh you know kuhn, yeah. kuhn whatever the hell this man um when i first spoke to him back four ish months ago um i built i'm not sure if i if i knew if you told me that you had a baby on the way but to get right to some uh, some nitty gritty for the people watching, um, I believe actually I'm, I'm sure I because I have it quoted that when we first started working together, when you first hopped in the seven figure clinic program, you said and I quote, "This has to work." Yeah, it was you were in a little bit of an interesting situation, man. I'll, I'll stop talking yeah. for a second and let you elaborate on that. Yeah. So. Uh... You know, when when COVID, I was a prior to doing this, um, I was a home health physical therapist, but I've been a PT for about eight years now. Uh, orthopedic sports therapist by training. Um, started having a family. Started doing the home health thing just for more flexibility of time and schedule. And uh, I just burned out with with home health and wanted to get back doing some more uh while well, treating some more active people that are a bit younger before they have so many medical comorbidities that it's tough for them to, to exercise and that's not in their mindset so i wanted to get to a point where i was getting to people before it got too late and right. um you know in a lot of cases that that is you know what you run into in home, home health unfortunately uh but i kind of midway through my home health career i started my own business doing house calls. Um, and I only had a few, few patients, probably a handful of patients. And, um, <clears throat> the majority of those became kind of lifetime wellness clients. Um, and, uh, and I thought, well, this looks like something that, you know, looks and speaks to me a little bit more. And, um, I was getting ready to open my own clinic, a uh, brick and mortar building right before COVID hit and had the lease agreement on my desk ready to sign and lockdown happened, COVID happened and uh, all of the, uh, so that I wasn't gonna jump into that right away um, because Wait, let me stop you for a uncertainty. Right there. Yeah. Well, 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 because I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. Wait, here we go. For the, for the first time ever in the Seven Beer Clinic talk show. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the uns, well, that this is not the uncertainty button. This is gonna be, like whenever somebody has a good line, we're gonna crack yeah. one of these. Um, cool. But uncertainty, right? So when that happened, I mean, give us, give the ladies and gentlemen viewing here um, a little bit of a behind the curtain view of your mindset. Because I mean, now they, they see the flash, they see the you know twenty thousand bucks a month telehealth online. But you know, you rewind you know, last year ish at this time. You know what what's going through your head? Uh, holy shit, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, and that's putting it mildly. Holy um, shit. Yeah. Um, I had two, I, I, at the time I had two kids and yeah. um, because I was predominantly full-time in home health, I was going to a lot of assisted living facilities and long-term care facilities that um, all shut their doors. And my private clients 
kind of wanted to put the brakes and just kind of see what happened. So I had zero income for the first three, four months of, of lockdown. Um, and uh, yeah. I think it was around, when did I find you guys? October, I think I started yeah. with you guys. Right around there. Um, I, had, I had kind of been picking up a little bit of steam, um, but I, I told myself at the time, lockdown happened i go well telehealth is an option that i can you know continue to see patients and no matter what's happening and i told myself that i'm going to make this work somehow uh because having a family and you know people that rely on me i cannot have the risk of something unforeseen like that um stop me from making a living and so I, I told myself that, and I, and I made a promise to my wife that I was going to make this happen, make it work with telehealth. So I can work anytime, anywhere. Um, and, um, no matter what is going on, uh, leveraging technology. So, um, by the time, so I started at zero and kind of steadily brought my private clients back in, gave them kind of a two, three session trial and, and they were loving it. It was the next best thing to me having them at their house. And, um, and then it was a matter of, you know, figuring out how to get more patients. And so I started kind of doing some social media posting and, you know, kind of a lot of what you see different exercises and stuff like that. And I got a lot of practitioners liking my, Yep. My stuff, <laughs> but no, uh, no patients coming in. Um, yep. I think I may have gotten now that I think about it, one or two people just asking, uh, about like if I took their insurance or something like that. And, yep. um, Don't but you I have no, yeah, yeah. I'd love that. Um, and that was it. That was the extent of it. And, um, and then it wasn't until I got my first new telehealth patient who which was a a referral from a friend a friend of a friend um that and i you know i sold him uh i think it was an eight week package and he paid for it up front and i said okay this can work how can i continue and replicate this and that's when right around that time i found you guys i happened upon you guys i think on facebook and uh, never looked back. Here we are. Hey, man, you made a lot of, there's a lot of opportunities for me to press this damn button, but <laughs> and, and it's going to lose its pizzazz if I, if I overuse it. You know? Use it too much. Yeah, you don't want to overuse but it. To get, <laughs> get a little bit personal. Um, yeah. I, mean, I mean, a lot of good quotes here, man. Firstly, for, for, all, the, for all the fellas out there, um, Sean, and I quote, made a promise to his wife. I would imagine, you know, for those who are watching, you know, we do run a little program called the Seven Figure Clinic. Um, we're not the cheapest thing in the world, but uh, my dog's barking. Um, he, agree he agrees uh, with you. What do you say? He agrees with you. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> um, no, relax, man. Um, but the fact that you made a promise to your wife, if I recall, there was never like a hey, I need to go clear with my wife first. You're like, you know what? Let's roll. Let's do this thing. What sort of cleared it with her after the fact? Cleared it with you know, I'd rather <laughs> ask for uh, forgiveness than ask for permission, right? I mean, what what was your mindset like? Because you, I mean, you said a few things in sequence there. Of I'm going to make this work somehow. I made a promise to your wife, and so so it sounds like that she trusted you, and you trusted yourself to make some sort of investment like that. Yeah. Right? Um, it, yeah. And full disclosure, I even took, I had a, I took a different course a few months prior yeah. to you guys, uh, which was around the same price, but it was more clinical. Um, and so I was coming off the heels of that and I had yep. all of these skills, but no patience. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to be making a run at this online. I need to figure out how to market myself online. I need to get myself in front of people. How do you do that without being face-to-face? -face? Right. It turns out you got to do it anyway. 
no matter which way you're doing it. But, um, you know, it, it was, you know, I knew that there was opportunity there. I just didn't have the knowledge to, to do it. And, um, I have some friends in the marketing world and, and they, you know, they do a lot with Facebook and, and things like that. So I knew that it was possible. I didn't know how effective it was going to be. And that was, um, you know, a reservation and a, you know, a skepticism up front, but, um, you know, I knew I had to make it happen somehow. And, you know, getting the knowledge of being able to do it yourself. That was the main thing that sold me on your course was you, you're learning, you know, it's not just paying somebody to do it for you. You guys are guiding, you know, you know, in a, in a big way, guiding us. But, um, the fact that, yeah. And I, it's funny. I just, um, told my wife this yesterday because I, I've taken the last two weeks. I kind of stepped back from the business for the last two weeks. Yep. Um, put a total stop on really everything. And my, my son had a, some, a little bit of health issues there, uh, that are writing themselves now, but I really needed the time to focus yeah. on no. family. But I, but I told her, I'm like, but I'm not worried about that anymore because that's something <laughs> I have the, I have the skill set to hit the gas pedal whenever I want. And I know I can get people in front of me and start making sales and, um, you know, they're giving, giving me that confidence to know that it can be done and it will be done. Um, you know, so, you know, me being a solo practitioner, um, you know, you, you take time away from your business and you don't have income. So, um, so that is a stress for a lot of people, but for me, I'm not stressed about it anymore Mm because I know I can make that up the next month. Dude, there's there's so much just like okay, I know I'm like just flattering you, like like showering you with these compliments. You're like everything after everything Sean says, I'm like oh, holy shit, there's so much gold there, and I'm ringing my bells and my buttons. But um, when you said hey, I knew it was possible, but I didn't know how effective it was, how effective it was going to be. So it's like mm-hmm. you knew that there was a chance, or it could but, be, but a, but a, but there wasn't a for sureness to it, right? How important you know, do you think that has been to your success and then to your success that you will have where, you know what, like how big is risk taking in your head? And have you always been somewhat of a risk taking kind of guy? Uh, yes and no. Um, I guess I would be a conservative risk taker. No. <laughs> um, my wife is 0% risk taker. So that's uh, always a... Yeah, I'm kind of giving her a little bit of shit here, but hey, that was a lot of um, risk. Dude, man. <laughs> yeah, her. Love her to, I love her to death. Yeah, she's like, you know, she's the angel on my shoulder, you know? Um, no, I, and, uh, but you know, you do have in, in business, you do have to take, take risk. And yep. you know, I'm a newer business, true solo practitioner, business owner. Um, I'm, I'm a year into solo, true solo practice now. Um, and, uh, it's been a rocky road for sure, but um, but I, you know, you have to take you have to be willing to take some risk because if you don't, you're missing a ton of opportunity. Um, the opportunity is there. It's just you need to kind of open yourself up to be willing to reach out and take it um, mm-hmm. because it's it's not it, opportunity just doesn't knock you have to you have to find it man and i think that's yeah. that's something that um you know in regards of what industry you're in but in, in this online world what, what i like to tell people is that we live in the post trust era right um where nobody trusts nobody trusts their neighbors nobody trusts you know uh their local government the state the federal government nobody trusts the who's on tv like, nobody trusts anybody right and so right. I think where a lot of people, and I could even speak for myself in in previous instances, where people really bottleneck themselves, right? Is they're looking for that for sure thing. And I mean, it's typically a younger business owner or somebody who's never been able to get past a certain level is they're looking for a for sure. What you, I think, put beautifully is you weren't worried recently about taking two weeks off 
or I mean, if we want to go to an extreme, you're not worried so much about a business setback because you have the skill set. And so for the skill set, for those, again, just tuning in, the skill set of being able to generate business consistently, right? Um, for, so for those ladies and gents, let's let's even take, you know, seven-figure clinic stealth media out of the picture. For those ladies and gents who are looking into digital marketing, right? Because we know, hey, it's 2021, excuse me. The thing's pretty damn important. It's probably going to continue to get more important. And a, a, a trap people fall into is let me just give it to somebody else. What sort of uh, what sort of inspiration, motivation, even words to the wise would you give somebody when they've came to the realization of okay, I need to get this social media thing figured out? Well, you have to understand it first before you can hand it off as yeah. a business owner. Yeah. I mean, you you have to know your business, and you know it. Ultimately, it, it, it doesn't fall on anybody else's shoulders, uh, you know, it falls on yours. So yeah. if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes and you just kind of let somebody take it and run with it, are they are they doing you and your business the um, due diligence it deserves? Yeah, um, because it's your livelihood. It's I mean, with my business, I mean, this is, you know, probably six, seven years of brainstorming coming together. Um, and, uh, you know, and in terms of, of marketing, it's, God, I mean, how do you want yourself presented yeah. and perceived? I mean, because that's, that's what, you know, potential clients, potential patients, um, they're judging that, you know, they're ju judging your genuine Yes, your, you know, your your testimonials, your your the information that you're presenting. Can you present it concisely, quickly, but having that genuine aspect to it? And um, you know, because that's that's again going back to the trust, post trust era. Yep. Um, you know, there's a lot of crap online. Um, yep. and so, you know, you have to figure out a way to differentiate yourself and I'm not claiming that I've cracked the code. If I did, I'd be a, more like Coca-Cola or something, something like that. But, you know, um, I'm making it work for me and that's as a business owner, you have to, you have to know what that is for you. You know, how do you want it to work for you? For me, um, I, my goal is to be able to work remotely, at least for now. Um, I want to be able to, like, if I wanted to take my family on vacation, I could, and I could still work if I needed to, you know, um, I could take my business with me anywhere in the world. Um, so that was my first goal with, with telehealth. Um, and, uh, and be, you know, adversity proof. Right. Um, so those were, you know, the, the two things I had to, do, I, I wanted to protect my livelihood and, and allow myself a quality of life that I can be there with my, for my family, with my family, as my kids grow. I mean, my kids are still little, uh, but I want them to see their dad. Um, and, you know, my dad, God bless him, worked seven days a week. I hardly saw him. Yep. Um, yeah, he provided a good life for us, but you know, that other side was missing. You know, we didn't see him a whole lot unless we took a vacation. So, um, you know, that's something that I want to give to my family. Um, and you know, if, if people are out there, you know, wanting a family, you know, they have to take those types of things into consideration. You know, again, what does life look like for you? What do you want it to be? And you can make it happen. It's just going to take time for you to figure it out and make it work. But you know, if you're persistent, yep. it will happen. Man, Sean, you're, you're in such a different spot than you were five months ago. But uh, you know, since one of the topics, so <clears throat> so that we can get a little real, man, because this is the real seven figure clinic talk show. <laughs> um, talking about family, right? Talking about something that is more than just marketing more than just sales, more than just leads, more than just ad costs, you know, um, 
how <clears throat> how big of a role? I mean, this is this is such a loaded question, but it's going to be a good talking point. How big of a role does your family, your your newborn, you know, play in your motivation for your business? And what sort of life lifestyle, you know, what sort of um, legacy are are you aiming towards uh, with your business in in that direction towards your family? Um, I would say, in terms of motivation, it's yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in saying that, it's you know I also want to reap the benefits of yep. the business with my family. So that's that's the ultimate goal that I'm working toward. Um, and I think for me, if I you know I'm not, I don't need to leave my kids millions of dollars. I mean that would be that would be cool, but. I, I feel like if my, if my kids get to see me and interact with me on a, a daily basis, other than, you know, maybe an hour in the morning, where's my yeah. camera? There it is. Yeah. Maybe an hour in the morning, hour in the evening, if I can see them more than that um, and, you know, have me be part of their day, I feel like I've won. Um, and so that's my motivation behind having my business working for me eventually. Um, so that's that what I'm working for. And then now that deserves, <laughs> that deserves one of these, man. Cause that was exactly yeah. the next thing I was going to ask you is can you, can you, can you, can anybody, can I, can the clinicians watching this account? Because everybody, I mean, the average, you know, uh, person in this group is probably, you know, 30, 40, 50. Um, but the vast majority have families, a good portion of them, uh, do not have, I don't even want to call it that luxury cause it's not a luxury. It's something you've worked for and something you have purposefully designed your business for. And that's why I pray to God that many, uh, are a lot watching this and saying, Oh, it must be nice, you know? Um, but can you do that working inside consistently and, and, and can you do that only working inside of your business? No, you just can't. There's not enough time in the day. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, for me, you know, and I and I haven't made it to that point yet. So full disclosure, right? right. <laughs> I'm still I'm still very much working in my business right now. Yeah. Um, like, man. And that's okay. And that's okay. But yeah. it's it's gonna get there. Um, and uh, you have to start somewhere. I mean, for me, I really started at the very bottom. I mean, I've, you know, one thing that my wife and I have talked about a lot over this past year is like on a daily basis, you're kind of reinventing yourself. It's like, if you want to make it, you have to be willing to get outside and stay outside your comfort zone. Yep. There's no, there's no other way. Um, and, and until you get your business to the point where it's the systems are in place that you can hand off to somebody else, um, the patients are there for you to be able to hand off to somebody else um, so that you can start to step back um, and be in either more of a more of kind of the marketing managerial role or, you know, that's kind of what I'm working toward eventually. Um, and then, and then stepping back even further, being more of kind of the CEO. Um, but it, it, you know, I'm learning how it's process. to do that along yeah. the way. It's, I, yeah. I yeah. I mean. it's not something that you just, when somebody says, hey, work on your business rather than inside, it's like, oh, it's like, wow, I've never thought of that before. Let me right. try it. You know, it, it, it's something that. Thanks, Captain <laughs> Obvious. Yeah. <laughs> In between, yeah. but you did say here, and by the way, I'm taking a shit ton of notes. And if anybody, by the way, is watching this, wants these notes that I can then type up and give to you, um, just, you know, Venmo me a hundred bucks and two of us. Just kidding. My free group. Uh, and the, the jokes are. Do I no, get mine for free? And you get yours for free. Uh, <laughs> or you get your autobiography that I'm writing for you. But, yeah, right. I, and I quote, you have to understand before you pass it off. So, guys, we're going to rewind for a second, right? We got in the family stuff. That was fantastic. Um, here's my dog, he's fantastic too. Actually, you know what? Let's pick him up. Joe, come here. Come here. Go. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. All right. Get out of here. So 
when we were talking about you know skill sets and confidence of saying okay here's my goal and you know um, asking for forgiveness rather than permission from the wife you mentioned you have to understand something before you pass it off especially when it comes to digital marketing so when somebody is starting their business like you work um, besides of course what they got the degree in besides being able to you know conduct the service and help somebody those things that they need to understand those skill sets that they need to adopt what which are the most important which do they need to take responsibility for which can they not write off and say oh well yeah i'm just not good at that um i would say the biggest is your ability to to converse with a with a lead yep. and steer them down the path um you know like you have always is objection handling that's you know and i'm not claiming to be perfect at it either but um of anything you have to get comfortable with sales the, <laughs> the <laughs> elephant in the room <laughs> um but for me what I've kind of taken from the process of sales is really um, being able to get inside that person's real, like in their head, in their psyche yep. and being able to understand and empathize with them where they're at. Where, well, first of all, where they used to be, where yep. they're at now and where they want to be. Um, if, if you can get really good at identifying that, in, you know, as quickly as possible based on what they're either overtly or not overtly telling you, um, you will be able to convert more people. Um, and you have to, you have to center the entire conversation around them and their goals, not around you because Bingo. you're another physical therapist or a Cairo, they've probably been through the ringer in the healthcare system. Like for me in telehealth, most of the people have never done video physical therapy before. They don't even know what that even means. So, and how are you going to help me without even touching me? So, you know, th that's an objection in itself that I need to know right off the bat like most people we have to get through that um Sean, can I but really but yeah go ahead because there was a specific uh young lady who uh somebody on my team was speaking to because they sent me a screenshot um literally within the past hour and a half and i believe that she's just kind of starting off in the telehealth world when somebody when she goes about marketing right hopefully she does and somebody tells somebody is confused that her physical therapy is not in person what advice what should she be saying to that human being so i like the term corrective exercise yep um so it's very movement based um and you, you cut you. This is a good one. Uh, I like this one. <laughs> like, why should I do it over video, man? Well, like, why? Why can't you? Just, I mean, there are, yeah, just, there are a lot of reasons. Um, I mean, convenience is one. Yeah. So you're you're in the comfort of your own space, um, and you know a lot of people when they go to a clinic, it's pretty busy. Yeah. Um, nowadays, depending on what state you're in may or may not be as kind of hustling and bustling as right. it used to be, um, you know, with the certain states still having restrictions with COVID and whatnot. But um, some people are, um, I shouldn't say afraid, but intimidated by that, um, having a lot of eyes on them, kind of like going to a gym, right? right? If you haven't, you know, if you're kind of out of shape and you're going back to the gym for the first time, that fear of judgment, and this, that, and the other, um, being in the comfort of their own space, 
helps alleviate some of that um, with with online. Um, so convenience and you know I would say comfort are are two big ones. Um, and then I always tell people the ultimate goal of any rehabilitation is to get you moving and accomplishing your goals anyway. So if we can figure out a way to do that without having anybody's, without having, without you having to rely on anybody else and teaching you how to do it at home in your own space, um, that you, that is another really big selling point for people Man, that, 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 space. that pitch sounds awfully familiar, you know, yeah. without relying yeah. on anybody else, do it within your, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, you know, it's funny. I had a patient, um, you know, she, she told me a joke. This was during a video testimonial she was giving me. Yeah. She was like, Oh, there's this joke and don't get offended by this. I, uh, I had a, a friend who had a housekeeper before COVID and when COVID happened, the housekeeper said, well, we're not, we're not coming back anymore, but, but we'll do it on zoom. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, I'll, we'll teach you how to clean the toilet, how to clean your sink and okay. this and that. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to use that one. It's pretty good. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very similar, you know, to, to what you guys are doing. It's, you know, having that knowledge, um, is invaluable. Yep. Um, and then, you know, there's some things that I'm doing on the back end um, as far as providing value to my patients oh, sure. um, that also sells sells that, you know, being able to do that on their own. Um, eventually, I'm going to turn that into more of a membership, but um, mm. but providing them with that value um, of, and resources um, yeah. to, to continue um, their improvement past their plan of care um, is also a big selling point. So being creative with with your content. And let's get tactical, right? So the skill sets, ladies and gents, that you need to learn to um, go from zero to 20K a month in just about 90 days and not just pass off, right? Not just cross your fingers, hold your breath and hope and pray to God that you can just pay somebody X amount a month they're gonna do it for you. Number one is sales. Number one is conversing, yes, sales uh, with a prospective patient, right? Which can handle objections, you can navigate them, you can figure out what they did in the past, where they're currently at, where they're trying to go as quickly as possible. Um, you'd be able to explain the key, the common objections they have up to why they should have some sort of, you know, why they should take their health in their own hands at home because of the convenience, because of COVID restrictions, because of the comfort and the intimidation that can come from being in front of other people. Um, and so you can get them moving without them needing to rely solely on you. So let's account all that as sales, right? Besides sales, what's the number two, maybe the number three thing that somebody must undertake as a skill set to add to their repertoire if they want to reach the heights that you have reached thus far? Systems. Systems, baby. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's kind of a buzzword, but yep. um, follow up. So, you know, the, the sales process sometimes takes time, yep. you know, you're not going to sell everybody on the first day and you yep. kind of have to get that out of your head. Um, if you don't sell them right away, mm -hmm. um, you have to, you have to be patient with the process because you have to meet people where they're at. And for me, uh, most people don't want to shell out money on uncertainty being treated in, you know, on video. Yep. So for me, the sales process does take a little bit longer. Um, but once, once you get them in front of you, um, that's, that's the biggest hurdle is getting them here, um, in the telehealth space with using this process. Um, and there are a lot of different tactics and methods and strategies to do that. Um, but having the touch points ready to go, um, the more, the more people you converse with, the more of a pattern you can be able to identify. And then once you identify the pattern, then you can have your touch points at those different points in the conversation. Um, and, and being able to automate those 
is it's crucial. huge. It's crucial. You can't working on the business. You can't you can't make it without doing that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that takes time and that takes persistence and patience because it's not always going to you know you you might think you have the coolest sounding email or text but when you get crickets okay well what's next you gotta you gotta be able to switch it up so having a few different things here's one pipeline but sean i'm I'm afraid i'm gonna annoy people so that's why i don't follow up huge missed opportunity because that's what everybody else is thinking and you're the one that goes that extra mile and so it sounds like so we've got Sales, we got systems, follow systems, nurture sequences. Uh, not <laughs> damn scared to annoy people because guess what? You're not going to annoy somebody. And if you do, it's better than 10 no shows, right? Um, yeah. And I think I found number three, your biggest, the, when you said the biggest hurdle was, is getting them in front of you. It, it sounds a little bit like marketing, man. What, 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 what's with your marketing game these days? So, my marketing game, uh, having. A good ad copy take notes guys yeah so well first of all oh yeah having a good ad copy that speaks to your patient and what you're trying to get across so you know depending on what service you're trying to market yep you have to understand who you're marketing to and and use language that speaks to those people what their symptoms are what those symptoms are affecting how are those symptoms affecting their lifestyle what are they missing out on um and and then giving them examples of other people that have gone to you and had a good experience so testimonials are huge i try to get a testimonial from every single person that i come into contact with even on a consultation um and you start building a library of testimonials that you can use in different places um so that for me has been huge just being able to say hey i had somebody just the other day just like you here were the person's problems they sound a lot like yours look what we were able to do now look at what they're doing that they weren't able to do before this could be you and if you want this to be you, this is the process. How does that sound? I mean, most people are going to be like, okay, I'll take the next step with you. And you just move them along in the system. Um, and, and it works. Man, it sounds, I'm um, you know, playing devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know, I'm not a, the biggest tech guy around. And it sounds, this whole advertising thing, Sounds extremely confusing. Sounds like something that I no way can figure out, even though I, you know, have a master's or doctorate, you know, level degree. Um, what do you gotta say to those people? Is this rocket science? Is it a complete cakewalk? Is it somewhere in between? I would say it's somewhere in between. Yep. But um, you know, cakewalk, no, because you know, there there are a lot of little things that need to be set up in the beginning that can be tedious but once yeah. it's set up and you have and you have the format then it gets quicker like anything i mean you know the more you do it the better you get at it yeah and the quicker you get at doing it um this this the the second thing with that is you really have to be patient learn to be patient because you're going to run into hiccups. Things are going to get messed up. You know, your ad is not going to do what you're wanting it to do. And, you know, or your ad copy or, you know, your metrics are going to do some screwy things. You need to be patient and, and be able to adapt to the situation and not get too hung up on the small stuff because you'll go crazy adapting a little bit of improvisation man let me ask you this i think it was the first it might have been the first freaking week man. uh the second week something like that 
where you had like two or three, like two to four patients convert or something like that. You start off mm -hmm. hot, right? When you yeah. first, when you first crossed when you crossed ten thousand dollars in a month for the first time, dude, give me give me the the, the four one one on what was going on between the years. Like, what what did, what did that feel like for you after the ringer that you went through of, <laughs> of getting this close to putting the you know the weight in the pen, ink in a lease, COVID hitting? What was yeah. cracking that ten k mark like? Um, it felt like winning the championship. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, um, before this past year, I had never even considered doing a video visit as a physical yeah. therapist. Wasn't yeah. even in my mindset at all. It was, I'm, I'm going to have a clinic and this, that, and the other, um, full disclosure, I kind of like this better <laughs> in a weird, <laughs> in a weird way. Um, but I think well, it's just business the lifestyle, the party the lifestyle that it affords me. I know. Yeah. Um, it, it's to each their own. I mean, you yeah. know, um, it's, it was, it, it felt really cool that I just did that out of, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting in my garage right now. Yeah, that's where I operate my business out of. I'll I'll give you a there's one there's my desk, and there's the other wall, and then and in front of me it looks like a regular garage. That that jungle yeah, that's, gym that's, thing that's, that yeah, I have no idea how to work. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you work it; it doesn't work you. Uh, see, there you um, go. My first yeah. step. Yeah. Um, so, and during the middle of a freaking pandemic. Yeah. Um, it, it, I just felt like I accomplished something huge for myself, for my family. Um, and, uh, you know, and a lot of people that, you know, my friends and my family that I talk to or, or ask me about what it is that I'm doing, you know, they don't, you know, it, I get it. they don't really get it. You're an online PT. How's yep. that working? Well, it, I don't know. I don't know if we have enough time to talk about it, but uh, I got some friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, no, but it's it's to me, it's it's been like the ultimate victory because I've hit this threshold, and I know I'm never dropping down below that again because yep. of the skills that I have. Because the now. skills you have, and, <clears throat> and you know, I mean, like you said, and you like you again, you said your you and your wife had this this conversation, which. Uh, my my actually my, my girlfriend had this conversation fairly recently about <laughs> she I gave a thumbs up um, <laughs> about reinventing yourself almost every single day right because yep. that certain set of skills of sales and marketing right got you to this point mm -hmm. it can fill you up to which again you're then not going to be able to do anything but treat all day right but then <clears throat> the next skills you're gonna have to bring on another skill set skill set to work on the business rather than inside it. So, Shano, you went from zero, 10K, 20K. What's next on the horizon? And part B of this question, what sort of skill sets are you anticipating that you need to adopt to then reinvent yourself to get to those lofty damn goals that you got? Yeah, so uh, as far as what's next, um, you know, my... My ultimate goal is is the 50k a month. I'm just going to put that out there publicly because then it'll it'll happen. Damn it right, happen. damn. <laughs> um, but in order to get there, um, now we're looking at expanding, improving yep. systems. So, well, first of all, before expanding, have to have the systems in place first. So that you know is you know I. I wake up in the morning, I check my ads, I treat patients all day. And sometimes in between I'm looking at, you know, metrics and things like that. But then, you know, at night I'm building out the systems. I'm building trainings for, you know, new employees. I'm, you know, working on, you know, automated email sequences and, and this and that. It's not sexy stuff. Um, but, you know, the, the more you chip away at it, you know, especially a lot of a lot of us, especially younger therapists, we're solo practitioners. Um, there, there are some people in the program that have multiple businesses that had to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that we're in similar boats uh, as myself and some of the other 
um, younger therapists, but um, or practitioners, I should say, it's not just therapists. Um, but like I said, staying out, getting out of and staying out of your comfort zone is really the only way to grow. Um, and right now I'm interviewing therapists to do some concierge stuff. That's a new ball game for me. Um, so I've always been on the receiving end of, of that. Yep. So, you know, now, you know, being a true owner is, you know, learning how to manage people. And there are a lot of different types of people out there and how to manage those that's, um, that's personalities and learning, learning methods. And yep. so, you know, it's, um, it's, it's never ending, really. But um, for me, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I, I would rather be doing this than getting yelled at by a manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, here, here's why, man. So, all right, you have to pick what, what, what's the first thing that you are, right? Um, so Sean is either a physical therapist or a business owner. Which one are you? I'm a business owner that happens to be a physical therapist. And that's why we can that's say how I, that's how I feel. And that's why we can say things like working on the business rather than inside it. That's why you can it's have a mindset. A vision out it's a of mindset. Of, yeah, it's a mindset. And why would like, here's here's what we can part with here because Shano has to get back to his to excuse me excuse me wait 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 to uh to Connor William Sean pronounce your last name one more time for me Kuhn Kuhn Connor William Kuhn. It sounds like he sounds like a prince. Yeah, he's, he's, he's certainly being pampered like one. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, he's being, uh, he's being prepped to be the heir to the throne, man, to inherit the biz. Yeah. <laughs> if that mindset thing, let's finish with this. There's a lot of people in this group who they were like knocked on their ass with COVID um, or which could have been, you know, not. I was. Yeah. And. You know, it put a lot of people in a vulnerable spot. It scared a lot of people. But COVID aside, a lot of people do not have their heads right when it comes to business. I would, I would venture to say the vast majority of the 600-ish people in this in this group right here are probably pretty damn good clinicians and practitioners, right? They probably all got pretty good marks, you know, had a halfway decent GPA, unlike me. And they're not killing anybody, right? They're helping people out. But their mindset when it comes to business from that separation of, okay, yes, my by trade, I'm a clinician or a practitioner, um, but their mindset is not there. Their mindset to taking risk is not there. If you could give some parting words of wisdom to those people in this group who are struggling, you know, who are looking for a silver bullet, you know, they think that there's this magic switch that's going to happen and they're, and they're going to start making a ton of money, helping a lot of people. If you could say something to get their heads right, what, what would that be? You'll never know unless you give it a shot. You ne you'll never know what could have been if you don't take the chance. For me, I well, I incorporated my business back in 2017, mm -hmm. but I had a full-time job as a crutch. I was like, Okay, when when am I going to do this? Uh, maybe it's this year. Maybe it's this month. Yep. Uh, things are going well enough right now. You know, um, why would I give up? You know, close to a six figure income already. <laughs> you right. know. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was well. I mean. COVID kind of happened. So it was like, continue what I'm doing or, or, or don't do it at all. Right. You know? Um, and I was like, well, let's do this. Screw it. Let's give it a try. And, but giving it a try meant, okay, well, you need to approach this as if it's your only option. And it's, it's not until you do that, that you really, you know, um, 
realize the potential that it has. You have to approach it that way. That gives a one last one of these. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your business at the end of the day. It is not mine. It is not you know some basement marketer you're paying two grand a month for to generate leads for you. It's not Sean's business. Um, it is not your professor's business. It's not your college degree's business. It's yours. It's going to require, and let me just rattle off some Sean Kuhn quotes here. It's going to require approaching this like this is your only option. It's going to require persistence. It's going to require empathy. It's going to require sales. It's going to require you coming to the realization and then the conviction that you're going to make it work somehow. Fellas, it's going to come down to taking a promise to your wife and asking for forgiveness, not, not permission. Ultimately, knowing that it's possible, you just got to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and do it all in the words of the Great and powerful, Mr. Sean Kuhn. Sean, oh, man, it's been a pleasure to have you on. It's been a pleasure to have you, of course, Thanks, in the uh, Seven Figure Clinic program and one of our private clients, one of our, you know, just his favorite people to work with. Sean, it's always been a pleasure, man. Here, um, I, I mean, gotta hand it to you guys. I man, mean, you guys know your shit, and you know well, how to teach it. We 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 can give you a thing or two, but it's you doing the work. Welcome zero to twenty k. Next is fifty. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that you're that you're gonna get there. Yeah. So that that's that's, you that's gotta cool. implement, implement, and just keep at it. Stay persistent. That's that's been that's been the key. The next number from there, Sean, fifty is going to be eighty four. Because eighty four per 84. month is a million dollars per year. So, uh, Mr. Sean O, appreciate the time, Mr. brother. Colin, thanks, thanks buddy. Coming. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it as well. But Sean, take it easy, brother. Have a fantastic night. Appreciate it. You too. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You all as well. Thanks, Colin. All right, guys. Sign it off.